Hong Kongers had better keep their mouths shut because commemorating the Tiananmen Square Massacre is a threat to national security. Welcome to John Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Today is June 4th, 2022, a day when nobody commemorates anything, because absolutely nothing happened here 33 years ago. At least that's a new rule in Hong Kong. As you may recall in previous decades, Hong Kong was a terrible and chaotic place. Hong Kongers were allowed to express all sorts of viewpoints, with no regard for how their words might harm China's national security. And Hong Kong was the only part of China where you could openly remember the victims of the 1989 Tiananmen Square Massacre. They would hold candlelight vigils on the big soccer pitches in Victoria Park. Every. Single. Year. But in 2020, China imposed a national security law on Hong Kong. It was in response to a year of protests against the Hong Kong government and the Chinese Communist Party. And now in 2022, trying to commemorate Tiananmen Square could get you arrested. For example, earlier this year, activist Chow Hong Tung was sentenced to 15 months in jail for trying to organize a Tiananmen candlelight vigil in 2021. That's on top of her previous sentence for trying to organize a candlelight vigil in 2020. What's so wrong about organizing a candlelight vigil in Victoria Park? Well, you see, it's because of COVID. The judge explained that Chow had ignored and belittled a genuine public health crisis and wrongly and arrogantly believed in commemorating June 4th rather than protecting the health of the community. But how about this year? Surely COVID isn't still a threat to people gathering outside wearing masks. Well, this week at a press briefing, a reporter asked Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam whether it would be legal now to hold a Tiananmen vigil in Victoria Park. She responded that any public activity in Hong Kong, regardless of the purpose, has to fulfill the requirements in the law. As far as any gathering is concerned, there are a lot of legal requirements. There is the national security law, there is the social distancing restrictions, and there is also a venue question. So she didn't actually answer the question or draw a red line on what is or is not legal. She basically just said, you know, don't gather in Victoria Park for reasons we'll decide after we arrest you. If that sounds menacingly vague, that's exactly how the national security law is written. Pretty much anything can be labeled a threat to national security if authorities say it is. So why are Hong Kong authorities so against people commemorating something that happened three decades ago? I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. Why are Hong Kong authorities so adamant about stopping people from commemorating the 1989 Tiananmen Massacre? Because Hong Kong is now controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, and the party doesn't want people to remember. It wants them to forget. The reason is simple. The Chinese Communist Party is a lying liar who lies. Mao Zedong and the Communist Party took over China in 1949 using a giant lie. That China in the past was completely oppressive and feudalistic and that the only way forward for China was to allow the great, glorious Communist Party to take over. Therefore, no matter how many landlords or counter-revolutionaries you have to kill, it's okay. It's for the sake of equality. Equality never panned out. Not because it was hard to achieve, but because they never intended it to begin with. But after Mao Zedong died, Deng Xiaoping promised economic reforms. Those reforms gave people hope that perhaps there could also be political reforms. So in April of 1989, thousands of people gathered in Tiananmen Square to mourn the death of Hu Yaobang, a former Chinese official who they thought of as a political reformer. And that led to a two-month occupation of the square, with people calling for the Communist Party to give them just a little more political freedom. They weren't calling for the party to be overthrown. They wanted the party to reform. And you know what the Communist Party's answer was? The June 4th Tiananmen Square Massacre was brutal. And even worse, it was caught on camera. And the victims weren't those Falun Gong, or those Uyghur Muslims, or any of those other people. The victims were everyday Chinese citizens. 
The Tiananmen Square massacre demonstrated that no one, no one under the Chinese Communist Party is safe. How can you believe in a brutal regime that kills its own citizens like this for no reason? That's pretty hard to do. And that's why the party needs everyone to forget. Forget the killing. Instead, you should celebrate the Communist Party. They bring peace and security. And that's the essence of it. The Communist Party is terrified of people knowing what they've done. So they will use the most brutal and even ludicrous methods to hide the truth. And that spills over into Hong Kong as well, the only part of China where they were still holding Tiananmen vigils every year. The Hong Kong National Security Law in 2020 was designed to bring an end to a year of protests. And it worked. But as a side benefit, it also gave them an excuse to shut down all discussion of Tiananmen. For example, in 2021, authorities temporarily closed down Hong Kong's June 4th museum over a supposed licensing issue. Of course, the temporary closure became permanent, so organizers moved it online. But then authorities blocked their website. Then authorities deleted their digital records of the Tiananmen crackdown under a police order to close the museum's website and social media accounts. And then finally, at the end of last year, the very last monuments to the Tiananmen massacre in Hong Kong were dismantled, like the pillar of shame. The University of Hong Kong had taken it down in the middle of the night because that's what you do when you have nothing to hide. The university's press release the next morning cited legal risks. After that happened, more Hong Kong universities removed their Tiananmen monuments. Lingnan University removed this relief sculpture, while the Chinese University of Hong Kong took down this Goddess of Democracy statue, a replica of the one the students had built on Tiananmen Square. They said they were removing an unauthorized statue. While Lingnan University claimed their removal was also because of legal risks, yeah, legal risks. The same vague legal risks you face if you commemorate the Tiananmen Massacre with a candlelight vigil in Victoria Park now. Because police in Hong Kong are now operating like police in mainland China. They're so extreme that once they arrested eight people for a silent event where they just stood there and held up blank pieces of paper. So clearly, no protest is safe. Which is why it's so brave that one Methodist church in Hong Kong actually held a June 4th event earlier this week. It's especially gutsy because a lot of other churches have dropped their Tiananmen tributes this year. The Methodist church's event poster said, We pray that the Lord will treat our country and people with kindness, bless us with peace, mend divisions, heal our wounds, and let more people return to the kingdom of our Lord. Clearly a subversive idea. The brave reverend of that church, Yuan Ting Yao, will probably wind up in jail at some point for that. But in the meantime, he told the South China Morning Post this week, I believe most Hong Kongers will not forget the June 4th crackdown. It's just that the way of commemorating may not be easy. He also said, speaking about the big candlelight vigil that's now illegal, in the past two years, they cited pandemic reasons. But this year, they clearly stated that only football playing is allowed at Victoria Park. All right, everyone, let's go to Victoria Park today and play football. We're plain clothes without any slogans and say nothing. Just kidding, the police will still arrest you. Because even the slightest hint of calling out the Communist Party's brutal past is far too dangerous. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a viewer on Patreon. It's a crowdfunding website we use to raise money to support us and all our staff at China Uncensored, because we're definitely not getting money from China. And one of the Patreon perks is being able to ask me a question that I answer on the show. Today's question comes from Droddle. Hey Chris and crew, why do American elites want Xi out of power? Are the elites hoping a new leader will make China and communism look more favorable to moderate Americans? Well, Droddle, a lot of American elites are very smart. So smart that they're actually stupid. They see all the terrible things happening in China right now under Xi Jinping, militarization, taking over Hong Kong, targeting U.S. companies, etc., and they think, boy, this Xi Jinping is a bad guy. Things were so much better under Jiang Zemin and that other guy I forgot. Actually, that's idiotic. Yes, there were what appeared to be golden years in China in the 1990s and 2000s when Westerners could go in and make money. But that's not because the Communist Party was better back then. It's because they wanted to steal our knowledge and intellectual property and use it to outcompete America. And they did. In just three decades, they've stolen almost every kind of American technology, from wind turbines to weapons. 
enough that they no longer depend on us. And now, they don't have to pretend to be nice to us. Ever since the Communist Party took over China, their goal has been to surpass and destroy the West. American elites may think they want Xi Jinping out of power, but that will not magically make things better. It will just lead to some new, awful dictator, because the nature of the Communist Party hasn't changed. But American elites can be so greedy, it blinds them to reality. They still think they can make money in China. Like investment firm BlackRock, which says we should triple down on China. Whether Xi Jinping is in power or the next guy, the Communist Party is not going to change for the better, and BlackRock is not going to get their money back. Thanks for your question, Droddle, and thank you for watching. Learn more about how you can support this show by going to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. Every little bit helps. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.